<laughs> Welcome back to Island Tea with your faves, Kevin and Amali. And we are now joined by the Department of Agriculture. Welcome, guys. Greetings, greetings. Good morning to everyone. Morning, morning. So how about we, we just take a minute to introduce um, ourselves who, so, so the listeners and viewers can know who's in studio with us. We could start on any end. Ladies first. <laughs> Weeks, chair of World Food Day for 2030. Hi, good morning. My name is Glennis Holtz, manager of the Bastia and World Fisheries Complexes. Good morning. Kevin Jeffers, communication officer, Department of Agriculture. Lionel Stevens, president of the Sandy Point Agricultural Cooperative. Awesome. And I'm Kevin Hanley, <laughs> the, the, the man in who's sitting in the studio. <laughs> Normal. Normal things. So, what's, what's the topic of conversation today? World Food Day. Tell me more. Well, let me first <laughs> give a synopsis of the World Food Day and how it all started. The FAO, which is the Food and Agriculture Orga Organization, was founded in on the 16th of October, 1945, which is headquarters in Rome, Italy. It operates in 130 countries and has 197 members. The overall goal of the FAO is to defeat hunger and improve nutrition and food security. So this week, we'll be having a wide variety of activities, and the focus is on home gardeners, community gardeners, farmers, fishers, and agro-processors. The goal is to promote local production and to encourage the population to buy local and eat healthy. I'll now turn over to Mr. Jeffords. Yes, yes. Um, I'll just give you a rundown of the week activities. Um, we started on Saturday with the address from the Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Alexis Jeffords, and uh, Sunday, we met with, um, we, we gathered with Wesley Methodist Church. And yesterday, Monday, the 12th, we had a handing over ceremony of seedlings and seeds to farmers and backyard gardeners from a collaboration effort, collaborative effort with the Department of Agriculture and also the Taiwanese. Um, Taiwanese Outreach, um, T-R-O-C. Um, uh, Tanisha, what T-R-O-C stands for again? Uh, kind of <laughs> sleeping me meditation. R-O-C, the Republic of China Technical Mission. <laughs> and Taiwan. Okay. And then today now we are here. We're doing some radio interviews. It's our first stop, WinFM 98.9. We thank you guys for accepting our invitation. And uh, this afternoon we'll be heading to Freedom FM at 1.00. And also today, 10 o'clock, we have uh, a rabbit handing over ceremony, a workshop with um, Aika. And uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, we're going to see the rehabilitation of Bayfords. If you guys know Bayfords back then, it was one of where animals, you could get dairy products, um, cattle, sheep, goat, pigs, a wide range of animals came from Bayfords. So we, we're in the process of rehabilitating Bayford. So we're going to have that launch tomorrow, also at 10. And at 1.30 on uh, Working For You, we're going to have a panel discussion where we're going to see persons from Ministry of Health and nutritionists. We're going to see my colleague here, Glennis, again, um, representing the Bass, the Fisheries, and the Fisheries Department. We're going to have Mr. Ian Chapman, representing the crop segment of the Department of Agriculture because they're going to focus on theme this year. Um, we never mentioned the theme. This year it is Go, Sustain, Nourish Together. Hashtag our actions are our future. And uh, Thursday, we're going to have the launching of the backyard gardens in three areas, St. Peter's, St. Johnson's, and Cairn. As Tunisia alluded earlier, the focus this year is mainly on backyard gardens. Um, oh, amidst nice. this COVID pandemic situation, everybody start to ponder and wonder where they're going to eat. <laughs> yeah. So the solution is right there, right in front of your face, in your backyard. So we're going to have that lunch. And then in the afternoon, in the evening, five, we're going to have the celebration of our food heroes. Back in the past, we used to call it World Food Day Prize Giving Ceremony. But this year, FAO focused more on the individual now, where they call them food heroes, so we're going to look at our farmers, our fishers, 
our um, agro processors, those who, who who really contribute to food security. So we're gonna give some hours to some individuals like some of the restaurant. I mean the supermarkets, the hucksters. Um, we're gonna look at some of the individual landscapers also, and that will be on the Thursday. The Friday is the one of the big days. We're gonna have farmers market and a fish festival. So when I finish wrap up, I'm gonna turn over to Miss Glennie. She's gonna speak about the mm -hmm. fish market and the farmers market. And then the Saturday, <laughs> we're gonna come down, bring down the curtains with a health walk from the bottom of Wimstone Hill to the top, back to the Sunny Point Market. And there we're gonna have the sparks with the agricultural fear on Saturday. After Glenn is finished speaking, Mr. Nile will speak about the Saturday. So that's all in our wrap up for the week. I'll turn over to Miss Glennis now for the Friday. Okay, folks, so let me get you a little excited about what's going to be happening on Friday. Mm. So with all that said, I would like to promote the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Marine Resources, Farmers Sphere and Seafood Festival. This event will be held on Friday, 16th October 2020 at the Bastille Fisheries Complex Grounds. Starting time is at 9 a.m. and it goes until. From the Department of Murray Resources side, we'll be having local fish and fisheries products on sale at a fairly affordable price. There will be conch chowder served with garlic bread. Oh. We have a fish water <laughs> served with garlic bread. It doesn't stop there. We have lobsters. We have uh, fish fries. We have grilled fish. We have steamed fish. All of this is served with size of Johnny Cakes. Uh. We have crab salad. We have rice and uh. peas. Don't forget, we have to eat local. Jeez. So we have our local corns and veggies. Mm. Yeah. And we also have, folks, it doesn't stop there. Mm. We also have octopado, which is mm. octopus. And we have our West Indian top shelf, which is Wilkes. Don't forget mm. squid. We have to put in everything local. Mm. Don't forget. When this is this afternoon? No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> no, this no, is no. on Friday, Friday the 16th. I won't cry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in order for us to eat local, we must remember that we have to first bear in mind, we have to catch our fresh fish and then we prepare them. So with all the kongs and all the lobsters and the tunas and the mai mai, the wahoo, you know, a mixture of pot fish, all these will be on sale starting time for all these sales will be from starting from 8.30 to until about 3.30. So okay. bear in mind, there's a window. So take chance, take a big chance in taking advantage of what we have on sale they're all affordable prices. Remember, it's local, so we have to eat local. So we're catering for everyone. Everyone. No one huh. cannot say. That, that is too expensive. Can I pre-order? No. Come on the date. The 16th, Friday, the 16th of October, 2020. Where? Bastard Fisheries Complex Grounds. You know why I said I want to pre-order? Why? Because if I shop there, I'm going to go home. Like I might not even reach home with the but food. But we want it to be stuff, eh? That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> if I see everything and I go... <laughs> And then I'm gonna re I, they're going to have to roll me out. <laughs> That's okay. Are you trying to figure out how all is going to fit? <laughs> Just no. me. Just come out and see. Mm. Wow. Yes, that's right. So you can also ask about our pandemic reduced prices in our steaks and filling mai mai, snappers, and wahoo. It's just too much to talk about, guys. So, you know, something we'll be keeping. And, you know, in order for us to keep something, we must dance and we must parade, you know? So, there to entertain us, we'll have Hellfire Sounds in the building. Firehouse wow. and DJ Shaggy. So the place wow. to be, where? Bath Bath Fish Fish That's Complex. correct. When? <laughs> Friday the 16th. October. Don't forget the date. Remember, we'll be having local drinks on sale. All local foods will be available at affordable prices due to the pandemic. So come on out, buy local, eat healthy. See you there. Kevin. So, you know, we're going there right after the show. <laughs> I don't know. I've been working out how we're doing this. Uh, maybe we just end the show at like 8.30. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, starting time is when? 8.30. That's correct. Exactly. I said 9 o'clock, but if oh. you want to come early, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll help you set up. <laughs> we'll help you set up. Oh, thank you in advance. <laughs> as long yes. as we could eat while we set up. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have enough. Oh my gosh, you just spoiled it there because I, pr I promise you, I'm, you're not really going to get much participation from me. Come here on because I'm going to be thinking about the food. Well, we're actually looking to have around 200 plus persons, uh, so you can. 201. I'm just there. about to say it. <laughs> okay, so see you there. I'll be there. Yeah. Who? Yes, people, you don't know. The Sandy Point Agricultural Cooperative 
has always been partnering with the Department of Agriculture to celebrate World Food Day, and that has been so for over 10 years now. And as usual, we bring down the curtains and the week of activities with our annual World Food Day Food Fair and Agricultural Exhibition, which is always held at the Sandy Point Marketplace, home of the Sandy Point Agricultural Cooperative. So we invite you down this coming Saturday, the 17th of October. Um, start time for the ceremony is about 9 o'clock. Also, as mentioned, as part of the week of activities, there's going to be a health walk starting 5.30 a.m. at the bottom of Brimstone Hill. And you go up to the top, to the, in the, to the parade square, where there will be a limited amount of balloons, where each balloon will contain a token for your participation and supporting the week of activities. So the first, I don't want to reveal the number of persons mm -hmm. at the top, you get a balloon and you return to the Sandy Point Marketplace where you can pop your balloon and receive whatever is inside. So we're encouraging persons to come on out and support the department, the Sandy Point Agricultural Cooperative, and all the stakeholders who will be taking part this week as part of World Food Day activities, which is Friday, the 16th of October. Also, SPACs would be at the fisheries complex. So for those of you who would be looking for fresh produce, you could find us there, as well as down at the market in Sandy Point. Also, not to drive, but this week is also Credit Union Week. They will also be having a food fair, and SPACs would also be there as part of Credit Union Week. So we try to push food all angle, every angle, everywhere, every opportunity we can. So give thanks. So we speak, awesome. We speak about the market. Oh, the farmer's market. Um, yeah, um, that's where the department is creating an opportunity for the agro-processors, farmers, cooperatives to um, showcase what they are doing okay. and also help to encourage persons to eat healthy. So we encourage everyone to come out and support the activity on Friday. It's at the fisheries complex. So make it a date. Don't be late. Also, to bend on the curtain on all these events, we have on Friday the 23rd of October, the Harvest of Priest Godfield concert at the Zion Moravian Church to be held on Victoria Road. That will be held at 7.30 p.m. in the evening. So awesome. Well, it, it, from what you guys are saying, I'm seeing a real um, effort to, 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 to pr promote healthy eating and healthy living and eat local. Um, what's the support been from the local um, like producers, agro-processors? Is there a real um, connection between the department and, and, and these persons? Yes, there is a connection, but it, things could always be better, you know. Right, right. Um, but still, I, as a farmer and a cooperative member, I like to stress the fact that we as the farmers, we are one of the biggest stakeholders within the sector, and we do not meet to discuss problems, issues, ways forward. Right. So many times whenever activities and things are happening as it pertains to agriculture, we are left out because we do not have that representative that would be there right. to speak on all of us' behalf. You represent your concerns and all yes, that. Yes, right. so it would be like an individual farmer who he represented himself. But if we as farmers were to really forge to farm an association, a union, right. where we collectively can champion the cause of our problems, our challenges, right. then we are in a better position to collaborate, uh, initiate, you know what I mean, Some partnership with, yeah. Yeah, with the, 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 the relationship with the ministry and the department. So um, there is, right, There's but I'm saying, yeah, yeah, from the farmer's side, we need to come together and try to address some of our problems. Yeah, give thanks. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that some of these challenges are actually across the board. Like, you know, a lot of farmers would face similar 
issues and similar challenges. So I'm yes. sure that collective voice mm-hmm. could go a long way, um, even in just helping the department to, to, to really recognize what some of these uh, issues are. Some of are. the issues are. Right. So if it's like five of us or a hundred of us now saying, well, this is a problem. You can right. ignore a hundred voices mm-hmm. saying the same mm-hmm. thing. So that's one of the things I, as a cooperative member and as a farmer, I always try to echo because as farmers, sometimes we make money, sometimes we struggle. But I'm saying when we're making it, if all of us would put something in a basket at some point in time, we have something to address a problem. Right. For example, we know how we can come every year. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And there's a possibility that Multiple. we could get damaged and we could get set back. So what if, as farmers, we were to contribute, let's say, Twenty dollars a month to a hurricane relief fund for us. Right. The money is there. If a hurricane come, we could check who contributing and see what you have, and you could say, well, give me I got a thousand, give me eight hundred or me thousand left back something, and you right. could kickstart your program. Whenever the government decide to help now, that's a plus. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah. But we have to take the initiative and do to for start yourself. to do things for we, not just me. But for we, because eh, you ain't got the problem. So mm-hmm. why you must take a half a million loan to bring in a chapter, and then you still go go work for all kind of people. Right. When all of we could put the money together, bring in the chapter, and the chapter service all of us. Right. You see where man I come from. Mm-hmm. So these are the things I, as a young farmer, trying to encourage so that 20 years down the line, things ain't so hard. Because I know man farming for years and... Up to this day, they ain't got water to farm it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Land preparation is still a problem. So these are things, basic things that we, as farmers, need to try and address. The department could help in many ways, but we must be the forerunners to address our problems. Right, that? definitely, yeah. definitely. Um, and I think it was mentioned earlier, you know, the whole issue of like backyard farming and getting more people involved in, in agriculture, even in, in, in a small scale or for, for personal use. Um, what's the response been since COVID? Because I, I, I mentioned it earlier, we read on ear here the comments that were made by the minister and um, in, and then we went in and started talking about some issues. But one of the things I mentioned was I see persons, even in my family, transitioning from sectors like tourism into agriculture because of the, the pandemic. And stuff like that. Is that something that you guys have been seeing happening on a, on a, on a bigger scale? Definitely. Um, over the past, let's say, six months, the department been going, pushing hard on backyard gardens. And the reception from the general public is a, ah, it's, it's amazing. Mm. You know, people you, who you think would never even think about planting, those are the ones who first in line to collect. Right. And they're not just collecting and they ain't doing nothing. The evidence is there. You have one in particular, Karen, Karen Dickinson, the very done lately. Mm-hmm. And the stuff this lady doing in her backyard, scientific, it, 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 it makes me like, what, what, what are we doing at the department? <laughs> right. you know? She trained everything. Compost, she doing everything organic. This is a lady that would have resided overseas for some time. Yes, yes, back. yes, yes, I saw that. Yes, yes, and and it, it's 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 going on. It's it's um, transcending to others where now they have an association, a backyard association. Oh wow! I I think about sixty strong. Oh, wow. You understand? Wow! And it's going. It's going. Every day, people come want to sign up for the backyard garden association. Because people focus right now on their health, you know. And COVID, I, I think COVID is not a mistake, mm. yeah. you know. They plan, you know, when I say they plan, you know, we're talking about they plan, but in the midst of the plan, what they had, they if I had something better. greater for us, yeah. you know, so we could focus on we, because this was the first time in history the earth has ever been so clean, mm-hmm. you know. Right. So with the cleanliness of the earth, the people start to get back their thoughts. They start to think properly you now. The, the, the third eye open, <laughs> you know, and it's only a healthy system to open your third eye. Right. As in the, 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 the trees, what, what the Bible spoke about, too. You know, for man preservation and man 
You know, I'm going to talk about still. Mm. You know, <laughs> so. <laughs> but, <laughs> Kevin, but Kevin, with standing that, to remember on Saturday, the Ministry of Tourism, in collaboration with the yes. Department of Agriculture, also launched the Backyard Garden Competition, and that oh, will wow. be running for a year. And, and everybody signing up on that. Everybody jumping on board. Everybody want a piece of it. Yeah. And I don't just think it's just for the competition part of it, but just to know, okay, we, we are part of something. You know, we, have, we could feed ourselves. We're sustainable. Right. You know, so that, that's, that's a key too, because in the theme, you also have a word called sustain. And I think this is one where we could see sustainability coming out of agriculture, backyard gardens. You know, notwithstanding the farmers, they're going to do their thing still. Definitely. Uh, it's commercial. We, we have to feed ourselves. That you know? is true. Yes, yeah, so. So it's a collaborative thing, you Yes, know? of course, of course. And this, this brings back to back in the days of bartering, a bartering system, because when your neighbor have a pumpkin and you have a, a oko, you could say, okay, neighbor, I have oko, you give me a piece of pumpkin, I get your oko. No money got pass, you know? And it brings a kind of love within the community also because sharing is caring. You know? Right. I mean, I've personally been, been thinking about getting involved in, in, in backyard gardening and, and stuff like that. And now that I know that there is an association, uh, like a group of up. people, it's, it's, yeah. it's a way to... To, you know, to get started in that. Yep. But, um, you know, time is fast spent. Um, mm. I just ready for Friday, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't see the quiet boy. Yeah, I just hear, think, I just hear thinking about, thinking the about a lobster. I just want the cards. I want the octopus. <laughs> you say squid too? Are you just ready? <laughs> Me, um, what yeah. about the lionfish? Let me hear you mention lionfish. No lionfish? Potfish. Oh, potfish. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. yeah, um, yeah um, I forget to mention... Sparks famous Italian, I mean, mm. <laughs> Italian can definitely can't live for the rest of my name, you know what I mean? Every Saturday, every Saturday, whether something I keep on and I keep, you could get your <laughs> Italian for lunch down at the Sandy, Sandy Point, Point Marketplace. Market. Compliments, Sparks. So, definitely. this coming Saturday, as part of the food fair, definitely the Italian will be there. Will be there. Will be there. Mm. All right, so. All right, well, thank you very much for joining us. I will see you all on Friday. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, and Saturday. And Saturday. Um, me and Mr. Yeah. Me and Mr. Lohan and you know I eat Italian. I eat Italian. When, 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 when it's food, I come in. Right. Anything for food, I'll Anything be there. Anything for food. Anything for yeah. food, I'll be there. I like it. Before good food, we have to make belly boss. boss. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure mine boss. All right. Just so. before we wrap up, I would like to thank some sponsors. We have Development Bank, TDC, Allen Purify Water, Smoothie King, and Epic Agrifusion. National Bank also. Yes. National Bank also. Yeah. And Spax. Spax. <laughs> <laughs> Always sponsoring. Mm. Awesome, that. awesome. Thank you guys very much. Don't um, forget, take part in the week of take part. activities. Show if you up. don't come today, come tomorrow. But make sure you come someday. Be a part of it. You understand? Some if you are talking about the food, you got to make sure you're going to health work here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All the food. One thing at a time. Come 